of God working in our lives, I feel as if I have gotten what I needed from, from this place today because I see people in love with Jesus. I see the smiles on your faces. I see the way that we're interacting and we're sharing love. I see kids playing. This looks good to me. It looks good. But I'm going to share a, a, a few words with you because I know that once you get fed, fed spiritually, it, it opens up other appetites. Okay, and so those lower appetites that are in this region right here, you're probably wanting, you're probably wanting those fed too. So I'm not gonna talk for too long. I don't know how many of you have been along around for a while, but I wonder how many of you remember back in the day when you're watching a TV show, and all of a sudden in the show, the TV, the television program would just be interrupted, and you'd have this blue screen. And then you hear this disembodied voice. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. For the next 30 seconds, this will be a test of the system. If this were a real emergency, you would have information that follows. And then it would go. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> and it would always come in the middle of your favorite program, right? In the middle of that program, you'd have that, you'd have that interruption. I remember that, and you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of all the people in the Bible, all the stories like Jerome that we, that we have ever had. Wouldn't it be nice if as a Christian, we could have that warning in our lives? If we, God could just kind of interrupt us in the middle of our day and say, this is a test of the emergency faith system. For the next period of time, you will be undergoing a trial, but this is only a test. Most of the time though, when we are put under pressure, when the testing period in our lives come, it comes without warning. And I don't know about you, but I've had my share of tests. And my share of tests, they're not easy ones. When, when the devil comes at you, he doesn't come easy. He comes hard. And I'm sure if I were to ask any of you, what has your life been like? What has your journey been like? Probably what I'm going to get from most of you is, do you have a moment of time? Because this is going to take a while. You want to know why? Because our lives are messy. Life is messy. Mistakes happen. We all have a testimony of pain. We all have a testimony of struggle that we are going through. But you want to know something? We aren't alone in this. How many of you believe in the Bible today? This is amazing. Love the hands. How many of you have ever opened up the Bible to read it? Okay. This is a, it's a different thing from understanding what the Bible is. Let's just be honest, okay? If you have ever opened up your Bible, you will notice something. The Bible is full of people of faith. We call them heroes of faith that we should use as examples for our lives. But if you were ever to take time to really sit down and read this Bible, you will notice something. This Bible, which is full of heroes of faith that we can use to model our life on, it's full of messy, fallen people. Do you realize that? From the very beginning, if you look at it up, in the very first family, Adam and Eve, their eldest son, Cain, killed his brother out of jealousy. Let's go to the next family, Noah. Noah was seen as a man of faith. He spent 200 years building an ark when the world had never seen rain. And what did he do when the, when the flooding was over? He went out and he got drunk. And he put himself in such a compromising position that he caused his own son to be cursed. What about the next family? Abraham. Abraham tried to pass off his wife as his sister to a king to save his own neck. This is the man who God based the nation of Israel on. He said, if you will follow me, I will make your descendants to be as stars. This is the man who, at the request of his wife, took a mistress, had a child with that woman, and then sent them out into the desert with nothing but a loaf of bread and some water. 
let's not talk about his, his cousin, his cousin Lot. His cousin Lot, whose, whose wife turned to a pillar of salt when God was trying to save them from the city of God and Sodom and Gomorrah, and she chose to look back. This man Lot, who wanted to give his daughters to the men of Sodom. This man Lot, who when they're in the caves hiding, his daughters seeking to try and promote their family line did some really wonky things with daddy while he was asleep. This is the stories of faith that we have in the Bible. And I like these stories, and you want to know why I like these stories? Because the Bible doesn't sugarcoat. The Bible tells it as it is. Because these stories of these people, these are real people who God called faithful. And I want you to hear that. These are people that God called faithful. People whose families there is murder. People whose in families there was incest. People whose in families there was drunkenness. And so when you look at your life and you may be tempted to think, my life is not a life God can use. My story is not a story that God would tell. I wanna ask you something. Is your life any different than any of the stories I've just told? I bet you it isn't. I bet you that nothing you have gone through in your life is something that we cannot find in the Bible which is filled, filled with stories of faith, people who are faithful, but people who are all also messy and broken. And do you know what? We try to model ourselves on this idea that life is a test and unless we pass with a perfect score, we're not good enough. But do you know what? The test scores have come in and we have all failed. Every one of us has failed. And so what did God do? He sent his son Jesus to take a retest for us. And so now every time that God looks at our lives, he looks at the few things we maybe have managed to get right. And he looks at the host of things that we have gotten wrong. And do you know what he says? Passed in Jesus. Saved in Jesus. Son of God. Daughter of God. Because nothing in our life is what proves us worthy for God except the fact that he has said, I have accepted you through my son Jesus. And I want you to know something. Life may not get easier, but God isn't going anywhere. Do you hear me? We serve a God who loves us and we think that everything has to be perfect and it has to be good and, and we have to say how life is good, but you know what? You know what? God can work in dysfunction. Dysfunction has never stopped God from working before. And if you have it in your life, I want to tell you something. It's okay. Because where we see this dysfunction, God sees possibility. I don't even think, I think that God thrives on us saying to him, I am too far gone so he can prove us wrong. We, each of us, has stories right now. Each one of us has struggles right now. Each one of us has doubts right now. But I want you to know something. Just as there was a voice who whispered to Jerome in his bed at night saying, I want you to be my son. There's a voice that is whispering to you right now. And that voice is saying, I want you to be my child. I want you to come to me. I want you to surrender to my family, to my love, to my acceptance, to my grace, because there's nothing in your life I haven't seen before. I can change you. I will change you. All that I ask is that you surrender, believe, and accept this free gift of love. If you can do this, I want to tell you something. There is no story in your life that cannot be a story of unconditional victory in Jesus. There is no depths that you could have fallen to that God cannot say, this is my opportunity to bring you to new heights. And so today, I invite you not to be ashamed of your past, not to be ashamed of your testimony, not to be ashamed of your story, because if you give your life to Jesus, it's a story of where you were to where you're going. That's, as, as Jerome said, it's not about our past, it's about our future. It's about the God who looks to us and says to us, 
I love you. I don't love who you can be. I don't love the picture that you think you should be. I don't even love the person that you're showing to the outside world. I love you. This is God talking to you right now. I love you. And I want you to be my son, and I want you to be my daughter. And all we need to do today is accept that Jesus and his gift are ours. That's it. There's no and. There's no, there's no but. It's just you are saved. And this is a grace that is yours. And so enjoy the grace today. Bask in the grace. Drink it up. Eat it up. And then share it with somebody else. And now, as we prepare ourselves to just not just receive the food of life, but to receive the food of this Long Beach kitchen <laughs> that is going to give us another source of nourishment, I ask if you bow your heads with me today. Our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, you are so good. And you have chosen to use us, Lord. And you're not asking for a perfect people, God. You're just asking for a people whose heart is turned to you, whose lives they choose to surrender to you today. And so we surrender our lives to you today, Lord. And we say, Lord, we want to be your sons and daughters. Lord, we accept this gift of grace. 